Hi guys. Do I look well? I feel well. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another day, another slay in the studio. Um, I feel like it's been a minute since we last conversed, when the days were a lot less dark and cold. In the midst of the summer, as a lot of you know, I opened my art shop back up and put a lot of my originals up for sale, including pieces that span all the way back to 2014, 2015, as a way to kind of move some of the archives out of my storage and into the world. Each piece on the shop really signifies a specific moment, era, lesson within my art practice over the past, like, almost decade. Um, but of course, because they are older pieces that don't necessarily reflect my entirety of like skill, technique, knowledge now, they are priced... They are priced a lot lower than my current work or like possibly any work that I will continue to put forth. So at the beginning of the month, I announced that the shop will be closing at the end of this year. I think it's just the perfect time of year to like grab that painting you might've had your eye on in the summer, but wasn't so sure about because the prices have been knocked even lower and there's an extra 20% off that you can get with code Gemini. Go on over to my shop, see if there's something you might like and just go get yourself that cute little holiday gift of having good taste. I don't- I didn't mean to start this with like a promo, an ad, or anything. I genuinely just wanted to talk about like what I've been up to in my art and life. And it accidentally turned into an ad. I'm so sorry that I'm such a good YouTuber. Everybody sponsor me! I think it ties into a couple things that I wanted to talk about though, um, which is packing, shipping, kissing goodbye, this piece of mine. And then, yeah, just how my practice has kind of shifted in the last little bit, which I would define as as if right on cue, my camera died. Um, but you can't silence me, I have another camera. I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, learning to live with the art practice. You may say I'm a dreamer. Dreamer! But growing up, sometimes you realize adulting takes- oh, I don't wanna say adulting, that sounds so millennial. Being an adult is very time consuming. Having responsibilities, having a job, having social obligations, having da 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 is very time consuming and sometimes that fantasy of sitting in your studio all day cooped up um, painting for as long as you'd like is not always a reality. It is unfortunate but it is true so we have to change our relationship to the painting process. Um, I think I used to paint in a way that's that was like nothing, 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 nothing. Six hour day of painting, nothing, 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 nothing. Eight hour day of painting, nothing, nothing, nothing. Like 12, eight, like huge chunk of painting. And so that eventually became like what I knew as my painting practice was something that I would have, and trust, I would get a lot done in those eight to 12 hours. I really would. I've learned the unfortunate reality that being adult means like your days off aren't even your days off. Like you just have to catch up on the rest of your life stuff. So to dedicate my day off to an eight to 12 hour day of painting is no longer the reality. It's not practical. And that's only the first part. And it it's with your motivation as an artist. It really does. If you're sitting around and you're thinking, oh, I really want to get back to painting, but you only know this thing of the act of painting as this eight to 12 hour commitment where you have to sit down and like grind it out. That is such a big hump to get over. That is such a big obstacle. Imagine trying to pull yourself out of depression to go into something like that, to go into this huge heaval, upheaval. That doesn't, that's not the right word, but it sounds like it. This trudging of, of labor. No, I don't, I don't think anyone, I could never. So here's what I've reconciled with and here's what I've kind of rebuilt and reformed for myself as an artist recently, is that a painting day, no such thing, no such thing. I just, I have my days and painting gets included and incorporated into them in one way or another. As an artist, of course, the dream is one day to be able to fully, solely dedicate my days and my life force and my energy to painting all day, to creating art all day. But sometimes that's just not the reality. I mean, in general, even if that was the reality, there are other life responsibilities like health, friends, other goals, other things. And you want painting to be a part of that? Let's make it work, let's find a way. What's something you do every day, even when you are so busy, when you are so, you have all these other things going on? Like brushing your teeth, okay? You don't not brush your teeth and wait until like the last day of the month and then brush your teeth 12 times that day. 
and then not brush your teeth for another month and then brush your teeth 20 times at the end of that month. I mean, I sure hope you don't. If that was the way that we operated with brushing our teeth, what kind of relationship, what kind of internal relationship would we have to the entire world of dentistry? If painting is something that you are struggling to incorporate into your life because it's, you're so busy, or you just want that bit of joy and creativity to be part of your day to get you through the week, you have to treat painting like brushing your teeth. Which, depending on your setup, depending on your space, depending on your schedule, of course, might be easier said than done. And I'm not saying I paint every day. I miss three days, I miss a week, but it's always here. In case I'm sitting in bed watching a show and I go, mm, I'd rather be watching a show and getting something done. You know what I mean? So it's always here. That's the key. Your toothbrush is always in your cup with your toothpaste beside your sink. Okay, I think I need to stop the whole toothbrush metaphor. Like, I think we get it. Have your whole like electrical lighting system set up. And what I mean by electrical is like, do not rely on natural light. Like always be using some kind of a light that stays consistent no matter what time of day it is, okay? Especially Especially in the winter, like it literally the sun sets at like 4 15 p.m. So yeah, I always have this here. It's always plugged in. I also have this is it. I also have that. Oh, it's actually better lighting for me. It's like a smart bulb. This kind of mimics like the perfect natural light, right? And then I just I keep this further away, but it kind of fills the whole room so it gives the same effect. As the natural light. Okay, I'm leaving that on. Next thing is that I leave this out and ready as well. This just contains every oil paint, like all my oil paints, and they're ready for me to grab, and then I have some brushes. But so I leave that out so that you're not, because like I get it, like sometimes the, the obstacle of like getting my ass up and painting for years wasn't like the painting part, wasn't like the having to focus and create something beautiful. It was like going through all my having to like pull out, like this thing's like heavy, like I would have to like go in my closet and like pull it out and like put it there and then like open it and sort through all the paints <laughs> and I didn't like it. And then I would have to like find my solvent somewhere and then get find a container for it. It's like now I just leave. I know this is probably not very good for my brushes, but I don't really invest in my brushes. Let's just start there. I just leave over time. I didn't know this about solvent, but that's all the, the pigment is like solidified and like concrete. Like it's like igneous rock. Okay, on the bottom there, and then the juice, you literally like leave it overnight. The liquid becomes clear again, and then the, sorry, not igneous rock, what am I saying? Sedimentary. It's like sedimentary, because it's the sediments of the paint. It becomes like a sedimentary layer on the bottom, and then you can just keep using the clear, the new clear solvent, and then eventually you can scrape out the pigment, and you have to like throw it away in a special way like through a special disposal system. Anyways, I'm so off track. I literally, I leave this out. I leave this out so I don't have to like clean my brushes every time I want to sit down and stand back up. I mean, maybe every month or every other month, I will do a whole cleanup and reset, especially if my brushes are getting real gunky and like the solvent is getting real cloudy and my desk is like just covered in paint, whatever. Another thing to do, the beauty of painting with oils, which is like kind of solely what I've been doing. I've been really enjoying the luxury of taking my time, letting layers dry, you know, smoothing it out, whatever. The luxury that I never got in school when I had to turn over a painting in like two weeks. So I've been enjoying oil paints since I graduated. And the benefit of that is that you can just leave them out. And like, it takes maybe, they dry up completely maybe in like a week. So a lot of these mounds are kind of just dried mounds and I just add a little, a little squeeze of some fresh pigment if I sit down and one of them is dry, but for the most, like, I just leave this out too. Okay, I leave it out. The colors I've mixed here are very thinly laid down, so they dry in like a day. So I wake up the next day, I sit down and I could just start mixing on top, which I know it's better to mix on like a pure white surface. Then you pay for my palette, I don't know. This is what works for me. And I just leave this out too. So that's my step one, that's my foundation, and that's my base. Everything is here and out, and not disruptive. You, oh wait, can I also show you one thing? Sorry. It's like a makeup brush cleaner. I use it for my oil paints because it just gets all that pigment out of there. So anyways, to have everything out and ready for me for whenever I choose has been fantastic because 
I've been painting pretty much almost every day. Extremely short increments, a lot of times under an hour, sometimes three hours, I would say. Like, I'll spend my evening doing it. I feel like I have so many other things that I also need to do in a day. So if I get 20 minutes of, like, something done, sure, why not? So I've been working on this piece. There are so many working parts to this piece that I can, like, sit down one day and just do like the highlights on the hair a little bit, get one layer of that down, that like even that is something and makes a difference and it's contributing to the completion of the piece. And there's just so many little parts and little details that I wanna get in that it's gonna take a lot of those sessions. And with this one, I really, I used a liquid gel to build up layers, like glazing layers, like the old masters used to do. I've really been taking my time with this one. It's still so far from completion, but I think the way I've been approaching it has changed my painting practice forever. I'm not, like, not to be dramatic, but it's changed it forever because now it's not this huge hill to climb. It's like a part of my day, integrated into my day, like brushing my teeth. Because you know how exhausting it is when you, like, are like, okay, I want to do this thing. <sighs> okay, find all the brushes. Okay, we gotta fill the we gotta fill it like you know you have to get everything set up and then just sit down and be like oh i feel like i can only dedicate 15 minutes to this today and then i have to go and then to put it all back the labor never ends there's a boulder on my back and it's just no no art should not be like that it should be extremely enjoyable it should be a luxury for you babes it should be something that makes your day easier or just is a space you know you can go to to relax and it's so not relaxing to like clock in for like a 12 hour painting shift which sometimes it is and sometimes you have a moment where it just it consumes you and those moments are beautiful but like going in being like oh fuck, i have to sit down for like 10 hours and like do this or like i have to go set everything up no you can make it a lot easier for yourself and i just i am sharing this with you acting as though this is the first time i've thought of this because it is and it's, it's changed my relationship to painting so much in the way that I approach painting and like listen I'm not making any huge strides on this like this has been three months in the making and I could have finished it a lot quicker but it's like no 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 I I like enjoying myself I like being cozy this who no one's waiting on me no one cares unless you do then go to steviaminix.com slash shop Anyways, speaking of shop, I was gonna take you guys along to pack up these couple of orders with me, drop them at the post office, maybe we'll treat ourselves to like a cute little beverage on the way home and then I'll kiss you goodnight. How's that sound? Let me show you what I got. I just went on a walk to Staples. Love that place. Printable shipping labels. I feel like every single time I take an order to like the post office or receive an order. I'm thinking of like ways that I can improve the shop and improve the whole situation. So for the longest time, I was right handwriting the addresses on the envelopes. My handwriting just sucks. It just does. I'm sorry. And it's just been so sloppy. And it's like, I've made like mistakes on the front, like scratched it out and like wrote a new thing. And it just probably looks so uggo. So I got these printing labels. So I'm gonna like print your addresses on them. So they're a little bit more legible. Um, I also got these, got these little postcards made. I'm gonna write some cute things on the back. So I just got the labels printed. First, I'm gonna pack up the print order. So I just sign right in the bottom. Boom, famous. And I was also gonna throw in this print as well. Get those right in there, perfect. I'm gonna take my card. in there too. So I'm then gonna peel off the sticky and and seal it shut. So then I'm just gonna place the shipping label and normally this is where I would just chicken scratch across the envelope. And as a nice touch, I've had this giganto bag of stickers. It's a castle in the clouds. Now, the other one I'm actually packing up like an original painting on wood panels so I want to make sure she's protected I found the perfect mailer literally the perfect height and it has some wiggle room for some extra but like bubble wrap or padding I'm gonna use some craft paper paper at 
the bottom is also providing a lot of padding. Okay, and that like just barely fits now, so there's no room for it to go topsy-turvy in there. That's my new favorite phrase right now, is topsy-turvy. Yeah, okay. This was actually, I'm really excited to send this to the person who will be receiving it. Sent me an email with a special request um, for the note that I always include in my packages. Um, and I just thought that was really sweet. And so just know that if you have any requests for, especially during the holidays, if you were shopping for anyone, my email, my contact info is all um, on my website, on my shop as well. So do not hesitate to email me and ask me to like, do like an analog cameo for you or like say anything or address anyone. Like I'm totally open to that and would love to do that. It makes it very exciting for me and very special. So just so you know, that's the truth. Also, I meant to say earlier that I'm very grateful that I found this box, this shipping box. It really is the perfect size and it's so easy. When I tell you, and I'm so sorry, sweetie, to any person who has ordered um, a painting or a larger print from you before, because the way that I go dumpster diving, not dumpster diving, the way I will go sorting through all of the cardboard I have in my house and like assemble this like Frankenstein like shipping box with like, the just, it's been vile, okay? And I know it's just not the vibe. It's not as nice as receiving something so sleek and streamlined. So I will be ordering more of these, okay. But this is really strong tape. Packages are finito burrito. I'm gonna go take them to the post office. Would you like to join me? Wait, can I also share something else with you guys that I just learned this year? And this is, I guess, Canada Post specifically, but I'm sure in the US there's an equivalent. You can get like a small business post office card and I guess it gives you discounts on um, packages. So if I'm sending out my original paintings, it doesn't work for prints or like envelope sizes, unfortunately, which I also don't know if that's true because one guy said it to me one time um, and he may have just wanted to like kill me and my family. <laughs> such as the nature of working at the post office, apparently. Yeah, I got a card, it has my name on it. It's like, it feels so official. And then you just present this before they start scanning everything and you can get shipping a little bit cheaper on some sizes so that you can charge your customers less for shipping. So that's really exciting. Okay. Yeah, thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited to get these babies to their new home. And of course, if you are interested at all in a painting, um, you know where to find them. I think I said it like five times this video. I apologize. But yeah, I hope some of the tips helped. Of course, if you have any questions about anything related to the art making process that you want me to chat about, happy to chat. And also, if you enjoyed any of what you saw today and you want to see it a little bit more frequently, I am always posting on my Instagram at Stevie Minix, especially regarding some works in progress on that painting that you saw in the background earlier in this video. That's usually where I post all my finished art as well. It's where you can get updates about the shop, what's going on with me, stupid little things in my life. And if that didn't sell you, then I don't know what to tell you. So uh, make sure you're following me on Instagram as well. Do not follow me on TikTok, please. I'm begging you, don't, don't. Anyways, see you guys next time. Bye, say as I make a left turn.